In this video, I talk about convergence, a model that uses dynamic assignment. Uh, usually, there are alternative root choices for trips or OD pairs, meaning that uh, vehicles going from A to B can choose uh, different paths. Um, in order to deal with this in Vizim, you need to run the model multiple times. That would allow the program to find alternative root choices or basically to find paths available for that um, trip and to balance traffic out on these available paths. So um, to do that, you can have an influence on how to calculate the costs, on how to search for paths, how to decide what to do, and also the path choice model you can change and update, you can ban certain routes, and you can influence the destination par parking lot selection as well using these inputs. But this video, we mainly focus on this convergence tab. So by default, these are the settings you find in Visim. Um, when you run the model from one simulation, then the next simulation. So you always need to make sure that when you run for convergence, that you run the model more than one time. So you can probably just put here a large number to start with maybe 10, 20, 50, 100. Usually, if you can't converge your model in 100 runs, there is something wrong. Either it is overly congested or your criteria you can set is too high. But also you need to make sure that the random seed increment is zero. If you put a number here, doesn't matter what number, that will change your random input in each simulation run. And that will make it very difficult for the model to converge because uh, basically if it is zero you load the same pattern into the model the same randomized uh, pattern in each run but if there is a number here that will change so each time you load basically a different pattern so vehicle may arrive differently uh, they might have a slightly different speed or stuff like that and those criteria for convergence to be checked, I set here in the convergence tab. So by default, these are the numbers. You need to make sure you select some of them. Um, and you also need to make sure that you go to evaluation, direct output, and select convergence to write to be written to a file. It's called CVA file. You will find it in your project folder. It is important, well, it is important, but not essential. So you don't need to have it. You don't need to export it. But if you export it, you can see how it changes over the runs or what's going on. But if you don't extract that, it will still find uh, the, and will check for the convergence. Um, if you don't tick anything here, and you want the CVA file to be exported, it won't happen. So I think you must have at least one option here to uh, select it in order to have the file. So if you don't have a guideline, usually each country or each authority has their own guideline in which they set out these values, what you need to use. Um, but if you don't have, probably just select the travel time on paths and just use the default setting. Um, so let's just discuss what this means. So travel time on paths, it checks the travel time on paths in each simulation run. So let's say in simulation run number one, the travel path, the travel time is a hundred second. Then it checks it in the next simulation when you run it. And it will compare those two. So if it's simulation number two, it is 150. There is a 50% uh, change. By default here, you have 15%. So that would mean that that path is not converged. Or it hasn't been converged yet. Um, so 
This 15% means basically the change from round one to another. And this means that on the on 95% of the paths, the change shouldn't be more than this, the 15%. If you <laughs> reuse it to 80, you will basically relax the rule and you increase it to 50, it will relax the rule because that means the travel pipes can change, can change a lot more and they only need to change this much on 80% of the route. So it doesn't matter what happens with the rest of the 20%. So let me just put back to the default these ones. And you can do the same. You can check on travel path, travel time on edges as well. And you can change for volume change as well on 95% of the edges. So let's just to recap, a path goes from one car park to another or a dynamic routing decision to a parking lot. And then an edge is basically a part of that path. So paths build up of edges. Okay. And now this one, uh, if you have a big model, very congested, it can be that the convergence criteria are met in a run, but in the next run, it won't. For example, you have a queue and one vehicle joins that queue and that one extra vehicle will block back another path. And then the travel time will change significantly there and will impact a lot of vehicles, a lot of paths or edges. So here, if you put it to one, that means it will only check it for one simulation run. So if these met for one simulation run to the next one, then you will be asked what to do. If you set it to four, basically it will check for four consecutive runs that the criteria is met from one to two, from two to three, three to four, and so on, depending on how many you add here. And this, if you leave it is at ask, Vizim will bring up a little window asking you what you want to do when all the convergence criteria are met. Do you want to stop it? Do you want to keep running it until another time it uh, the convergence are met or all the way to the end, to the um, to basically to complete all the multi-run, all the 20 runs or 50 if you put 50. You can put it to stop or complete all runs, but probably just leave better at ask. What I'm going to do, I run the model now and we can see when the criteria is met and we can explore the CVA file and what that means. Okay, I keep running it, I put it to quick mode. As you can see now in the first one, everyone uses the shortest available one. Then it starts exploring uh, new paths. Just, uh, just about this one, the evaluation interval is 900 seconds. And also my simulation period is 900 seconds. So I have one evaluation period for dynamic assignment. If you put that 900 here to 300, then you will have three evaluation periods. And when you store the cost and store the path, so obviously you need to have these for when you run it for convergence. And you don't need to select anything here. It will automatically be stored for all vehicles. But if you want additional data for specific vehicle classes, you can add tick these. And you can create archive files. It's not necessary. It just makes it easier to see uh, the results for each run. Um, if you want to go back and check, I would recommend keeping that. If your model fails or quits or stops, you still have uh, the historical file. So you can just override the name and put it back and start running it again. If you have a big model, that can be helpful. So now it is in the fifth. Um, you can see that it is looking for new paths, testing new paths in the model. The eighth now. Ninth. And soon, once it has all the paths it can find, it will start balancing the traffic out. As you can see now.
And now, if I just let it run, maybe one or two more runs, and then it will balance out, and the question will be asked. Did I select? Let me just double check. Yeah. Okay, in the meantime, I show you the um, um, Okay, then I just uh, add some more runs in the meantime or I just relax the criteria. Maybe I do 30 But to do that you need to delete these files Otherwise you will get a warning that these are overwritten. So it's just better to delete them but I keep the BEV and WEC file because it will keep using these from the previous 20 runs. So basically this way I carry on the simulation runs from the previous set. Okay, let it run a few more times. Um, if it can not find a convergence, then I will relax the criteria. But now you see that it met on the basically on the 23rd because I ran 20 before and I ran three now, so I stop it. And we can have a look at the CVA file. So run one, two, three. So run number two, uh, it has four sections, this file. One is just some information. Then this is the uh, volume difference, traffic volume difference. Here, the difference is zero. The difference is between 1 and 2, 3 and 5, 6 and 10, and so on. Or here, the last one is the difference is greater than 501. It shows it for the edges and shows it for the paths. So for the edges and the paths, also there is one evaluation interval, 0 to 900. Again, if I use 300, for example, it would be 0 to 300, then the numbers, then 300 to 600, and so on. The evaluation interval should be set in a way that uh, whatever you use in your model, if you have a vehicle input and signal settings and, and so on for each hour, it's better to keep them uh, for one hour devaluation period. If you load your traffic in 15 minutes and you do some settings also in 15 minutes, if you change them, it's probably better to have them for 15 minutes. Um, so here, what it shows in this run, run number 21, basically four number of edges had vehicle difference between one and two. And number, uh, sorry, three paths had, uh, or on three paths, the volume difference was between one and two. This section, the next one, shows the same thing, just for travel time difference. In percentages, zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. As you can see here, there is a new, there is no new here, because in the first run, when there is no travel time available, the number of paths will be shown here. It uses that has value because it will be ignored those paths when there is no nothing on them. So here what you have, there are seven number of edges on which the travel time only changes between zero to 5% compared to the previous run. Or there is one path where the travel time changes between 15 to 20 seconds compared to the previous one. And this is the first se third section. As you see, there is a lot of the, the last one, the assigned convergence, assignment convergence. So this is the, the last section. This is a summary of all this data. Basically, this gives an overview of what's really going on, summarize the data. And here, if the criteria you set in the model are met, if it's not, then it's a minus. If it's met, it's a plus. So let me open the last run where the convergence are met. 
x plus. So let me show you a quick description of these, what they actually mean. So shares converge path travel time. Basically, this is the figure. It shows the change, um, the, the percentage change. OK, let me explain here. Let me open the previous CVA, maybe this one. So this is 88.89%. That means this is path travel time. So here, if we summarize the numbers, 7, 8, 9. You see that on one path, the change is greater than 15%. So 1 per the total 9 is this figure. 88.89%. So if you go back to Visim, parameters, this is not 95. So this is not 95. So the convergence criteria are not met, or is not met, since I have one. This weighted, this basically um, weights this figure these ones based on the volume on those paths it is just extra information basically so the total volume across all converged paths per the total volume of all paths so this is extra information this first one is the one is considered in the condition the next one is basically the same as this just for the edges and also important that edges without volume in all intervals of all intervals of the current simulation run are not taken into account. So again, this is travel time on edges. You see nothing here because I did not tick it and the same volume on edges. I did not tick it. This weight convergence, uh, weighted shares, converged edges, travel time, that is the same basically as that, just for edges. Sorry, this one. Yeah, the total volume. So it weights the, the, uh, this one with the volume on those edges. And again, this assigned conv is the uh, if the convergence uh, if the model has converged or not so then you can plot these if you read these or just input these uh, values from your spreadsheet uh, into a spreadsheet from these files you can plot how this uh, convergence uh, output is uh, increasing or changes over the run over each run and then you can just basically have a graph that shows that, you know, the more time, the more simulation runs you have, the more, uh, the better it is, basically. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful. And I didn't miss anything. If there is any question or it was a bit confusing, let me know in the comment section below. If you like what you see and you would like to support the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. That would help to put uh, my videos first. Thanks a lot for watching.